it's already 40 minutes in and i want to obviously touch upon the most important news of the day because i only found out about this the other day because i haven't really been keeping in touch or keeping up to date with what's happening with flipping brendan and that whole gang of people but it looks like brendan decided to rebrand king and a sting and a wing because i think brendan has maybe an ego big enough to feel like people think i needed theo to be successful I can prove I don't and I'm going to rebrand the show with a whole new lineup, a whole new kind of image and appeal and then do the same numbers and prove that it's not just a Theo thing. Maybe that's the thing going in his head or maybe just wanting to differentiate between the King and the Sting and the Wing or whatever it may be in this new show. Anyway, the King and the Sting and the Wing is no more. It's completely gone. It's now called the Golden Hour or as some other people would like to call it, the Golden Shower or Shower Pony or Golden whole shit whatever it's called an interesting kind of idea to go behind i guess it's kind of themed around it being like an 80s sitcom show that the family would kind of gather around the tv and watch during the golden hour maybe saturday night who knows interesting intro music i'm going to play for you now so you can kind of get an idea on what they're trying to go for but this is the golden hour courtesy of brendan shaw and i guess thick boy studios right i'm assuming this might be the this might be the first thick boy type of stuff that they're probably going with I'd imagine so, maybe outside of it, who knows. I wonder, is it actually a Fit Boy thing? Is it a Fit Boy production? I don't know, what does it say in the description here? Say anything about a Fit Boy production here? It doesn't, does it? It doesn't say nothing about Fit Boy. Interesting that they don't, there's no real branding that ties it all together, isn't it? Interesting, it's all just, okay, nothing about Fit on there. So it's just maybe its own standalone thing. But I'm sure Brendan will kind of add it into his Fit Boy umbrella thing. But this is the intro music for the Golden Hour. Let me know what you guys think of the Absolute Podcast itself and the intro music because I've got some thoughts on the other end. I have some thoughts. <laughs> we're friends that laugh, we're friends that shout. Sometimes we don't know what we're talking about, but that won't stop. Nothing can stop us. Ooh, yeah. I show you use the love. Just rebrand it enough. It's stronger, better, bigger power. Cause it is the golden hour. It's the golden hour. The beak seems accurate. Beak. Of course, as the show opens, there's a person walking in front of the camera. Can I be honest and say I like the intro music? I have to be honest. I like the intro music. I think the intro music is cool. It's fresh. It's kind of refreshing that it's not um, little brows rapping some stupid nonsense. It's kind of refreshing. It's not fucking chin singing horribly in that weird Filipino R&B voice thing that he has going on. I know he's not even Filipino. I know he's flipping. Um, I know he's a uh, South Korean. But if you know any, if you've grown up in a community of people, who like filipino guys especially who are into sneakers and breakdancing there's always one or two filipino kids that love to sing in that kind of crying r&b type voice thing so he has that thing going on which i think sounds absolutely terrible in my opinion um but i like that miss song i don't know who did it i think it's a fresh out of approach to it kind of it kind of makes the show sound better than what it actually looks and sounds like if that makes any sense the intro music makes it sound like it's an actual really produce interesting spin on a podcast that isn't just a typical stuff do you know what i mean like maybe it kind of feels like that but obviously when when the cameras when it kind of fades to white and it goes back onto the scene it's just a standard podcast right three guys on the show talking about topical topics some you know call-ins which i think personally are fake i think it's interesting like i said prior that brenda would go for the rebrand because if you're familiar with the channel, I'm pretty sure this is Thick Boy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I'm pretty sure this is um King and the Sting. Anyway, this is still the King and the Sting. Just still the King and the Sting channel, but they've just rebranded it. Um, because obviously they didn't have that many subscribers, four hundred and thirty-one before. So they've rebranded the King of the Sting um, channel. But the King of the Sting had a lot of cachet. Hopefully, you guys in the chat remember your law. But if you remember the King when the King of the Sting started, that was the first instance when Brendan had some good sort of like um sentiment around him people actually liked him on podcasts because for the longest time people thought he was a flipping bit killer he wasn't the funniest dude in the world he'd always kind of pull sh whole shows back in terms of not being able to get the jokes or keep up and when theo started to get involved with the fire and the kid universe and he started to go on the show more and he started to have that kind of back and forth that led to the king and the sting it was the first time 
people actually enjoyed Brendan and thought he was funny and brought some sort of comedic comedic relief to the show even though he was basically a punching back of Theo in the first parts of it he did kind of you know throw some good jabs back at Theo's way and whatnot so the fact that Brendan was willing to kind of ditch it to go for the golden hour shows that you know he really wanted to make a proof of point I feel like look I can do it on my own I don't need Theo um but having watched the show it's pretty evident it's pretty obvious how much this show relies on Eric and Chris D'Elia. Like they are really good on this. Like actually funny. I've I watched and listened to a couple bits of it here and there, and I legitimately laughed out loud. And I haven't laughed out loud with any content, you know, concerning Brendan and the stuff that he does in a very long time. Even King and the Sting towards the end, Theo looked like he didn't want to be there. The mood of the off studio was off. Chris was still coming back off the cancellation. Eric was trying to be friends with these people because they weren't friends with him before. It felt weird, but I feel like this energy around this show now, with the, these three being the main people on the show, with Eric feeling like he's got a seat at the table i feel like they actually fit and it works a lot better as a show but these two are way funnier compared to brendan like he's struggling to keep up with them it's absolutely incredible how embarrassing it is how much he's struggling and i feel like a lot of it could be mitigated if he just didn't sit in the middle he wants to be the big boss man and the head and the leader of the show by sitting in the middle but he doesn't really have the chops for it and he's like having to go left and right scanning to keep up with the show he's having to repeat people's jokes to kind of feel like he's there but i don't feel like he is there man he's not got the chops and the community value for it so i think he would be best suited to sitting on the sides of the show and kind of acting like a host and basically setting up crystal Lee and eric griffin with jokes but he's obviously at this position where he needs to prove that he's funny because people don't think he's funny and he's trying to do it and it's not working i mean and it's like holding the show back a little bit so it's not you know what i mean and obviously the dynamic between him and chris is odd as well because it feels like chris maybe feels like he's getting back to his old place where he was prior to the diddling accusations so maybe there'll come a point where he feel like he's bigger than the show also and he might do his own thing i don't know eric griffin i feel like he's just happy to be there and is willing to do whatever it takes to stay on that show because you know bills need to get paid how it's pretty clear who the who the flipping weak link is and it's brendan unfortunately in this show it's he's definitely the weak link so as much as i like the intro music as much as i think the approach to it is maybe interesting it's still the same old podcast with three comedians on the show trying to make jokes trying to crack each other up and shit and i feel like brendan is definitely somebody that kind of struggles in this kind of format and he probably makes it worse by sitting in the middle because he's trying to keep up by looking left and right but he can't and literally the show is passing him by as he's trying to keep up with these dudes and it's absolutely brutal to watch in real time i'm not going to lie